Now I'm just going to run through the 2016 question 8, question on overhead apportionment and job costing and part A uh, asking to calculate the overhead to be absorbed by each department showing clearly the basis of apportionment used. So I've set it up with uh, the, almost the same as the first table that you're given. So list out your overheads and the totals and the four departments in this question. So I have my overheads listed. I'm putting in an extra column just for the basis and I have the totals in there. And I've already slotted in the four uh, departments, production one, production two, service A and B, and uh, the totals are gone in. And the indirect materials are given at 380,000 and they are, they are already split between production one and two. So if those in, the indirect labour, 400,000 is already split on the given table at 280 and 120 and nothing in service. And the machine maintenance, I've just started with that. And the machine maintenance would be always split uh, on the basis of machine hours. So if you look at your original question, machine hours there are 50,000 in total. 30,000 of that is in production one and 20,000 of that is production two. So the ratio then is three-fifths as to two-fifths across production one and two. So three-fifths of 12 is 7,200 and two-fifths is 4,800 and none in the service uh, departments. So that 12 is divided on the same basis there as machine hours. So that one is done. And the depreciation of buildings, I've just done that one as well. The depreciation of buildings would be divided on the basis of book value. And the book value of buildings is 600,000 in total. And 300,000 of that is production one. Okay, so we're going to start part B, which asks us to transfer the service department costs to production departments one and two. And that's essentially where we take what we've done in part A, and we have our totals here for service A and B, and we have to transfer these back to productions one and two. And we are actually given in the question the ratios for the transfer. So service departments are to be transferred to the production departments on the following percentage basis. So service A is 70% production one and 30% production two. So again, these can be done on your calculator. So Underneath part A, I'm just continuing the grid there and putting in part B. And I'm just going to take service A and it's 70, 13. And the service B and the ratio there is 60, 40. So just to note those there. And you can do it on your calculator. So it's very quick. And just take the total for service A, 10,400, and we're going to get 70% of that, and we're going to transfer it then to production one. So 70% of the 10,400, so that it's 7280. So you just do that in your calculator, and 30% of that, or the remainder, is 3120. And that means then that this is fully cancelled out, there's zero left on that service A. And then service B, we take our total of 4,800 and we're going to transfer that 60% to production one. So 60% of that works out at 2880 and the balance then of 40% is 1920. And we're simply adding these in then to retotal. So I'm just going to total this overall total here and it will act as a cross check. And the production one and two have to be totaled as well. So 572760 is your overall total there. And 280840 is your overall, overall total in production two. And you can retotal here then as well. So you can cross check your totals there. And that's part B where we've eliminated the overheads for service A and uh, 
transfer them into production one and two. So moving on to part C then, it asks us to calculate a suitable overhead absorption rate for each department. So you have to decide what's the most suitable. And you do that by looking back at your machine hours and labour hours back in the second grid there. So uh, for production one, machine hours are higher than labour hours. And for production two, labour hours are much higher than production hours. So therefore you'll have two different um, rates there. So to calculate that then, if we take um, production one, so we can see the machine hours are higher, so therefore we'll use machine hours overhead rate. So I'm stating there that it's machine hours, so it's quite clear to my examiner. And I take then my total overheads of 572760 that I just got here in part B and I'm putting that over then the machine hours. So the machine hours again were 30,000 there given in the question. So when you divide that up then you're left with 19.09 So that's the cost uh, per machine hour for overheads and for production two, the overhead rate is again just refer back to the original table in question, the labour hours are much higher there than machine hours so therefore labour hours is the rate that's used. So total overheads for production two over labour hours this time. So that's our 280,000 that we got in part, sorry, 840,000 that should be, over that we got in part uh, C there or B, and we're putting that over our labour hours. The labour hours are 45 in this instance. So so 280,840 divided by 45, and that will work out at 6.24. So the absorption rate per labour hour. And that is your part C done. Okay, so for part D, we're asked to compute the selling price of job number 650. And in order to do that, we need to, first of all, get the cost. So your question outlines then, first of all, the um, materials. So for production one, it was 7,500, and production two was 2,800, so you can just tally those at 10,300 into one figure there. And then we also have direct labor, So for production one that was 4,000 and production two was 3,900 and the overall total then 7,900 on that. And then that's your prime cost so you want to tally those. So 18,200 there and then you want to go to your overheads. So your overheads then for production one. Um, we're told that it's 120 uh, machine hours. And remember, we're using the machine hours because that was the higher uh, for production one. Uh, so it's 120 machine hours, and we're going to multiply that by the rate that we got in part C. So our rate there was 19.09. So you just do one overhead multiplier for each department. So for production one, it has to be the machine hours because that's um, the higher overhead. 
So that multiplies out then at 2,290 and 80 cents. So we'll bring these to two decimal places. And so for production two, it was 100 hours, again that was given in your question, and we're using labour hours this time, and that's multiplied by the rate that we got in part C, which was 6.24, and again multiplying that out then you have 6, 2, 4, and 0, 0. And you're adding those then to your uh, prime costs, and overall then we're getting 2, 1, 1, 1 4, Point eight zero, so twenty one thousand one hundred and fourteen eighty is your cost of the job. So after that, then um, we were told that uh, they have a profit margin of twenty percent. So uh, the margin is. 20% and we'll be able to work back then to the selling price. So if the margin is 20% then it means that this is equal to 80% and again on a calculator you can do the divide, divide by 8 and multiply by 20. Uh, so divide by 8 and multiply by 20 you get your margin and that is 5, 2, 7, 8. Point seven zero, and obviously dividing by eight multiplied by ten, you get your hundred percent of twenty six thousand three hundred ninety three point five zero. So that's your selling price for the job for Part D. Okay. So part E of the question is a little bit of theory and part one of this as explain what is meant by reapportionment of overheads and we've just done it there in part C and it's where the um, the service department costs are divided between between the production departments because overheads can only be recovered by including in the cost of production. So by including the costs of the overheads in our cost structure of this particular job, we can recover our overheads as well as the direct costs involved in the job. And part two asks us to name three overhead absorption rates and, sta and state why they are based on budgeted figures. So three overhead. Well, we actually had two there already in the part C, so we can absorb per labour hour or per machine hour. We can also absorb per unit, and those are probably the most common. And you can also get a percentage of prime cost. So instead of doing this, I could have got a percentage of my prime cost there. So those are the most common ones. And the last part of that, and state why they are based on budgeted figures. So they are based on budgeted figures because actual costs 
not be known. And a So they are based on budget figures because actual costs may not be known and a price has to be quoted or tendered for a job or a product. So they have to put some price on it. 